And when we talk about digital technology, um, again, that can mean lots of things to different people. Um, and so I, I took, a, I guess, a, a relatively broad approach that I was going to be talking about the general field of automation and what that might mean. Um, even so, um, I found that was a pretty big topic to talk about in a short time. Uh, okay, I'll use this one. And so I thought I would limit myself in this presentation to talking about optimising the cane rate. So one of the things that a factory, well every factory has a capacity um, and in many cases the objective is to reach that capacity on a consistent basis um, and to make it as, as high as it can be. Um, so the question is how to achieve that. Um, given that any factory has lots of constraints to deal with. So when you're talking about the cane rate, the, the usual approach for controlling the cane rate is to set the speed of the first mill. You then make an assumption that the feeding station um, and the cane supply leading into the feeding station is able to achieve the required rate to keep the feed chute of the first mill full. So if, if that's not the case, then what happens is that your first mill feed chute um, is not full and the performance of that first mill is going to be less than desired. Now assuming that everything works well at the first mill, um, you've then still got the issue that you may have capacity limitations downstream. Uh, for example, um, you may have capacity limitations in the, in the bagasse system. So if you end up with too high a fibre rate going through the bagasse system, there is the potential for choking at transfer points and, and problems of that nature. And then there are lots of potential limitations in capacity um, in terms of juice, juice and liquor processing. And ultimately what that leads to is, is full tanks um, and generally followed by a need to stop. So I'm reporting on work primarily done with a, with a sugar factory in Australia um, a number of, a few years back. So what, we, what we're chasing is a, a mechanism, an auto automated system that will allow a high number one mill speed when we don't, we're not hitting any capacity limits, which will maximise the cane rate during that period. But it will reduce the first mill speed when a capacity constraint is reached. And by doing all of that, we'll maintain the first mill feed chute in, in a reasonably full state which will maximise the performance of that first mill and ultimately lead to the best possible extraction. Now one of the key elements of this control approach is that we have not one but two speed limits. We have the desired mill speed um, which in theory is going to give us the cane rate that we're looking for but then we also define a minimum mill speed which will be the lowest possible speed that we're, we're, that we're happy for the mill to run at. And like any equipment, there is a, a, a defined range of mill speeds or cane rates that the factory will operate with any level of efficiency. If you go too slow, um, then all the mills get down to minimum speed and you don't get good performance. So, so the, the approach here was to take two two mill speeds um, as set points and use that to design a system. So I'm first going to talk about the upstream issue of making sure the first mill feed chute remains full. So the conventional system um, has a chute level controller on the first mill uh, which operates by changing the speed of the prepared cane elevator. 
Now that works very well up until the point where the elevator reaches maximum speed. And once it reaches maximum speed, it cannot go any faster. And so we cannot increase the cane rate any further. And so we cannot keep that chute full. The approach we, we, we came up with to deal with this issue was to use what's called a split range controller. So we have our chute level controller, um, which I, judging by what everyone else was doing, it's not going to work terribly well. And yes, I cannot see where the red dot is. Um, but uh, the, the, the box on the left is, is our usual chute level controller. Um, so when the chute level is below the set point, um, the output of the controller goes up. Um, and when it's below set point, it goes down. Now what we then do is feed the output of that controller into two different function blocks. One of those function blocks has the purpose of determining what the elevator, the prepared cane elevator speed is going to be. And the other one um, works on what the mill speed is going to be. Now, how we handle this split range is to split the controller output into two, two sections. Um, so by default, the controller output is from 0 to 100%. Uh, so in this case, we split the output so that the first half deals with the elevator speed. That's 0 to 50% output. And then the second half, 50% to 100% output, then deals with the mill speed. So at 0% output, the elevator speed is at minimum. At 50% output, the elevator speed is at maximum. So in other words, that's the highest possible rate that can be achieved. Now, once we go beyond that 50% level, the approach taken is then to reduce the speed of the first mill. And by reducing the speed of the first mill, we can then maintain chute level. So here's an example of the split range controller in operation. So if we have a look there, I've got three graphs. The top one is the chute level itself, um, with the red line showing where the set point is. And you can see that we have managed to maintain the chute level around that set point quite well. But if we then look into the detail of what happened, we can see that in the first half of that one hour period, the elevator was more or less completely fixed at 100%. So in other words, the elevator was, was going as, hot, as fast as it could and the rate couldn't be maintained. So what happened in that period, and the bottom graph shows, the turbine speed then reduced. And it was by reducing that turbine speed that we enabled the chute level to remain full. So this is a situation where we are maximizing the cane rate, even though it's not as high as we wanted it to be. We wanted, we wanted the cane, we wanted to, to and you can and see in the, in the second, second part, part of the of range, the second, um, the second half, half of the hour, hour I, should I should say, say that the, the turbine, turbine is up at the set point. point. So the so red, the red line, line there shows a set point of 5,200 5, revs, revs per minute on the, on the, on the turbine. turbine. And, and we can, we can see, see that the elevator is able to maintain chute level at a reduced elevator speed. And so, and so by, by, by doing, doing this, this we, we addressed address the, the situation that, that the shoot level, level was, was always, almost, almost always, always low. low. Um, um, so in other words, so in other words the, performance the performance of the, of the mill wasn't, wasn't very good. good. And, and although, although, although we, we set, set a high, high mill speed, we weren't, we weren't getting, getting the rate, rate that we wanted. That we wanted. <laughs> so, so with this approach, approach we, we maximized the cane rate. The cane rate could not have gone any higher. In the, in the first, first half, half of the period, period it was, it was as, at, at high, as high as, high as it could be, be given, given the feeding, feeding station, station constraints. constraints. In, the in the second, second half, half, it was, it was where we where wanted it to be because, because we, were we were able, able to, to operate, operate at, at the desired, desired mill speed. speed. 
So that was, so that dealing, was dealing with the upstream, upstream issue of how, how to, make to make sure that we can maximise the cane rate within, within the, constraints the constraints of the feeding, of the feeding station. station. So then, so then I move, I'm, not, I'm, I'm moving now, now into, into dealing, dealing with, with the downstream, downstream constraints. constraints. How, do, how we do we make, make sure that we, that we don't end up with chokes in the baguette system? system? And, how and how do we, do we make, make sure that we, that don't, we don't end up, end up with, with juice ups or liquor ups, ups, ups or, or any sort of ups that we might have, have in the juice processing system? And in both cases, the general approach is to reduce the mill speed set point towards the minimum mill speed set point. To, to make sure, make sure that, we that we don't hit, hit these, these constraints, constraints which, would which would then ultimately result, result in, us in us having to stop the factory. factory. The, approach the approach we've, we've taken, taken with, with the BAGAS, BAGAS system was to, was to actually control, control the cane, cane fibre rate. rate. So, we, so choose we choose a set, a set point, point being, being the maximum, maximum cane fibre rate, rate that we are comfortable with that will not cause a choke in the BAGAS system. And so, and so we then we have, have a cane, cane fibre rate controller, controller, as you can see in the bottom, bottom which is then giving us a mill speed output, a number one mill speed output. And if we look at how that works, again, we can see that the shoot level is being maintained um, because of the, what, I, what I was talking about earlier. But then if we look at what happens um, in the in the, latter, in the bottom two graphs, the bottom one shows our measurement of fibre rate. And I'll, get, I'll, I'll come on to how we measure fibre rate a little later. But what you can see is that in that one hour period, there are times when the fibre rate did reach our set point of 120 tonnes per hour of fibre. And other, other times when it didn't. And so if we look at what happened to the turbine speed, um, in the middle graph, you can see that early on the turbine speed was quite low um, and initially we were at that fibre rate set point um, and so it was consistently low but then the fibre rate dropped away and when the fibre rate dropped away our fibre rate controller then increased the mill speed. So in other words we were, we were max trying to, again trying to maximise the cane rate that we were processing. And you can see that um, around 2.20, um, we managed to get back up to the fibre rate set point again, and the fibre rate remained constant for quite a while. And then at around 2.30, we can see that the fibre rate dropped away again, and so the turbine speed increased and managed to get back up to the set point, um, where it maintained itself right up until the last couple of minutes where the fibre rate set point was again achieved and so the turbine speed started to reduce. So then moving on to the other constraint which was the juice processing constraint. You know, so in the, in the juice processing system, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll call it juice and liquor processing system, um, there are a number of tanks, buffer tanks, which are used to take out the, the variability in what's being processed through, through the clarifier, through the evaporator, through the pans, etc. Um, but ultimately, if you have a constraint, if you reach a constraint in any part of that system, ultimately what it will mean is that the mixed juice tank is going to fill up. And once the mixed juice tank fills up, um, we, we have to either slow down to minimum revs or we have to stop until we've addressed that situation. So the idea here was to automatically preempt what is going to happen and slow down well in advance of that. So in this case, we looked at two tank levels as, as set points or lim limits, I should say. Uh, if the tank level was less than 55% full, then we were happy to operate at full speed and let things happen. But if the tank level reached 75%, that was, that was as high as we wanted it to go. 
Um, and so at 75%, we wanted to be operating at minimum mill speed. And we took a relatively simple approach of, of linear interpolation between those two points. So between the maximum or the desired mill speed set point and the minimum mill set point, um, we chose the actual mill set point uh, based on the tank level between 55 and 75%. So again, here's a period, another one hour period, um, where the pan stage was rate, lim late, rate limiting. Um, and if you look at the bottom graph, you can see what was happening to the tank level in that period. So it was rate limiting through that whole period. And you can see that with, it, with our 55 and 75 percent limits, we managed to maintain a tank level within that range during that whole period. And we did that by varying the turbine speed, as you can see. So when um, at about 7.35 or thereabouts, you can see that the tank level got very close to 75 percent. And so the turbine speed was down very close to minimum speed. Uh, at the other extreme, around, uh, well, from 7 to 7.10, uh, you can see that the turbine speed was as high as it got during that period. Now, by taking these approaches, uh, what it means is that we take the operator out of the, the challenge of maximising the cane rate. This, our experience, and I'm sure it's your experience as well, is that the operator will make his life easy. And rather than push to the constraints of the system, he will operate at a lower speed to make sure he doesn't run into trouble. And quite often, um, when you do run into trouble, the mill speed will come down, and then he will go on to other things and leave it down. So what this does is take that decision away from the operator and will always try to maximise the cane rate based on the constraints of the system. So yes, it will drop when it needs to drop, but it will also increase when it can. And so you can maximise the cane rate through the, through the process um, using this, this approach. Yeah, no worries. Um, so just to finish off, I'll just talk a little bit about the actual technologies that are used in, in operating this system. So first of all, we need a tachometer to measure the drive speed. We need a chute level measurement. We need load cells, either through a weigh bridge or a belt wire or something like that, to give us an estimate of the cane rate. Uh, we use... Um, a near-infrared spectroscopy system in Australia on, on, well, almost half of our mills, which can give us a cane fibre content measurement. And then we need a liquid level sensor um, to give us a juice level measurement for the mixed juice tank. So I guess the trickier bits um, that aren't standard process control equipment that are used through multiple industries is the shoot level measurement which requires some sensors to detect the presence of cane and bagasse at various shoot heights, and an approach for then converting those signals into a percent full measurement. Um, and then I mentioned the NIRS near-infrared spectroscopy technology to measure cane fibre content in the line. And the way we do that is to have the NIR instrument um, mounted in the side of the feed chute of the first mill, looking at the prepared cane bed as it comes down the system. And of course we need a distributed control system that has PID controller capability, function blocks and a minimizer block to choose the minimum mill speed to satisfy all of the constraints. Thank you.